Hi, good morning everyone. This is Dr. Neha Korke, welcoming you to yet another session of Zomio Classroom. Today we will be looking at a very interesting case, uh, but I haven't mentioned the diagnosis here. I have mentioned the main feeling behind the case here and that is what is going to lead us to the final remedy. Now, let me give you a quick, um, you know, short pressy of uh, what to expect from this session. Uh, I would like you to keep your notepads and a pen ready or your laptops ready for typing because in this case, I will be showing you how we can represent a case using different approaches and using different repertories. To be very specific, we will be using Kent's repertory, Boga Boninghausen characteristics and repertory and the complete repertory and finally we will be seeing what are the remedies that come for all the rubrics that we are recording and how different symptoms are represented in different ways in different books. So here is where we start our case. Case of disappointed love. A 24 year old man contacted the clinic and requested for an appointment. He requested meeting urgently though he said but doctor as per your convenience I don't want to trouble you. So when he came to the clinic this is the history he gave. He had been suffering from severe twitching of eyelids since three weeks. He was in tears while speaking about his complaints. The twitching was very intense and of late he was finding it very difficult to even open his eyes. He had visited an ophthalmologist who diagnosed him with benign essential blepharospasm or BEB and was surprised that such a young person had developed this. He was given anticholinergic drugs which relieved him for about two weeks. After that, the blepharospasm recurred and then the doctor suggested taking injections of botulinum toxin but the patient got scared and he refused and that is why he came for homeopathic treatment. When we began, now this was, this were his physical complaints. The, this was his chief complaint, blepharospasm. Now blepharospasm is of two types, primary and secondary. In secondary blepharospasm, the reason or the cause is an organic pathology, whereas here it is functional. There is a slight abnormal activity in the basal ganglia of the brain because of which nervous twitchings occur. So if you look at the sphere of action, yes, it is the eyes, but more than that, the primary sphere of action is the nervous system. When we began a detailed history, he mentioned that he was in love with a girl and was seeing her for the past one year. He was completely invested in the relationship. About 25 days back, the girl suddenly told him that she no longer wanted to be with him. So when he heard this, he was shocked. He felt cheated, sad, angry and she said that she had used him. But he could not say anything to her. So all of this was said to us but he couldn't say anything to her because he did not want her to feel bad. Now imagine an injustice has been done to you but you are not talking about it. You still don't want the person who has done the injustice towards you, who has hurt you to feel bad about the response that you will give and that is why you don't give the response. 
Now start thinking along these lines about what could possibly be the remedy for this person. Because all these minute statements also give us a picture of what the remedy can be. He was crying bitterly in the clinic while talking about his complaints and situation. So when we look at his uh, emotional state, the symptoms that he gave, whatever he spoke, led to grief, feeling of being cheated, disappointment in love, shattered dreams, unexpressed anger. And this was an observation. He was weeping or crying while talking about his complaints. Now all of this happened 25 days back. And since three weeks approximately, he has started getting these twitchings. So which means that from the emotions, the pathology has directly or the, the core that has been struck directly is the nervous system. So the highest uh, system in the body, the nervous system has been directly affected by these emotions that have happened. Understand the level of sensitivity of this patient. Now something about blepharospasm. Blepharospasm is a rare condition that causes your eyelid to blink or twitch involuntarily. The twitching is caused by muscle spasm around your eyes. I think at some point or the other, we have also experienced mild twitching in the eyelids which have disappeared on their own. You know, or they have disappeared after you take a vitamin B12 supplement which means that there could be a deficiency. But this is a different level altogether. This goes to such a level and the spasm is so intense that the patient may not even be able to open their eyes. And this is exactly what happened with this patient. It is the result of abnormal functioning in the vasal ganglia. Usually, adults between 40 and 60 years of age develop this. And that is why the ophthalmologist was so surprised that such a young person has got this condition. BEB or benign essential blepharospasm can be triggered by exhaustion, overuse of caffeine and extreme stress. So we know what the cause is in this patient. It is stress and this has directly led to an abnormal functioning in the basal ganglia of the brain and then the BEB. So now if we look at the totality that we can possibly take for this patient. We have causations with us, very very strong causations. The first being grief. Followed by an acute feeling of being cheated or deceived. Disappointment in love. There is suppressed anger. Now the next symptom that we took was an observation weeping while narrating complaints and the last we took was the blepharospasm why was the blepharospasm taken was because of the very specific sphere of action that this patient showed when he walked in his when we talk about psychosomatic complaints we talk about the psychological complaints and the somatic manifestations. In this patient, the somatic manifestations are so specific. They are on the nervous system and then they go to the eye. Very, very specific. Because of which we have taken blepharospasm in our totality as well. Now, it will be very interesting to see how well all of these symptoms are represented in the different repertories. 
okay what we want to show now uh, here on is not just how we arrived at a remedy with a simple repertorization we want to show you how each symptom is represented in each repertory because each repertory is unique in itself specific in itself and has its own language its own verbiage its own usage of words depending on the author and the time at which the repertory was made or the year or the era in which the repertory was made all of this makes a very very big difference in the verbiage and the representation of rubrics that is done so let us see how this case could be represented in different repertories now again please note down this totality because we will have to look for the same symptoms or equivalent ones in the repertories in which we search so there is grief feeling of being cheated disappointment in love suppressed anger weeping while narrating complaints and blepharospasm all right so let's see the representation that we find in kent so based on the totality that we considered this is the representation that we got in kent's repertory so we got grief ailments from love ailments from disappointed just be very um, observant of the verbiage okay the next is anger irascibility suppressed from weeping tearful mood telling of her sickness when and the last is twitching of lids because blepharospasm is not present as a rubric in kent's repertory which is why we have taken twitching lids so i repeat grief ailments from love ailments from disappointed anger irascibility suppressed from weeping tearful mood telling of her sickness when and twitching lids now one rubric that we have not been able to find out is the feeling of being cheated in kent's repertory but let us repertorize using these rubrics and see what remedies come up all right so when we have to go into this let us look for the rubrics uh the classic way which is we will go into the actual chapter of the repertory and we will search for and record the rubrics okay so the first is so we go in for kent since we are doing kent's representation so the screen that is open is already open to the classic view or the repertory list i need to look for the mind chapter of kent's repertory okay so in the search chapters bar i type mind okay and i get the references of mind chapter for different repertories i click on kent and i select the mind and now the mind chapter of kent's repertory is open so the first four rubrics that i will be taking are from the mind chapter the first being grief ailments from so i just start typing grief so i get the general rubric of grief and i also have grief ailments from okay so i click on grief ailments from where here i can see that there are 32 remedies for this and i check the box and it is recorded now the next rubric is love ailments from disappointed so let me just type love space disappointed okay so kent has just one rubric love ailments from disappointed with 18 remedies 
it is the exact rubric I am looking for. So, I check the box and it is recorded. The next is suppressed anger. So, I type anger space suppressed. Okay. Again, just one rubric with five remedies. Let me click on it to directly jump to that rubric. I see only five remedies. Orem met, chamomilla, ignatia in two marks, sepia and staphysagria in three marks. Okay. I record this rubric by checking the box. The last mental rubric that I will be taking is weeping while talking of her sickness. Now, again I type weeping space sickness. Okay. So, there are two. Weeping, tearful mood, telling of her sickness when and the second is lamenting, bemoaning, wailing, sickness about his. Now, we take the first one. Weeping, telling of her sickness when which has four remedies. So, we just check the box and it is recorded. Now, so far, we have recorded all four rubrics from Kent's repertory, Mind Chapter. We still have one more rubric to go, which is twitching of the lids. Okay. For that, we need to go into the I chapter of Kent's repertory. So, in the search chapters tab, I type I and I see all the uh, references for I chapter in different repertories. I again click on Kent because I am doing Kent's repertorization. And now I am looking for twitching of the lids. So I type twitching. So I come to a general rubric called twitching, but I am looking for twitching lids. And here in the search result is the rubric that I am looking for. I click on it. And now I see there are 74 remedies for twitching of lids. So, I check the box and now all the rubrics that I needed to record from Kent's repertory are recorded. Now, to view the repertorization sheet, I click on the repertorization icon in the black taskbar and this is my repertorization sheet. All right. Now, grade wise, I see that Ignatia is the first remedy in the list, followed by an attribute, then Staphysagria, Lachesis, and Pulsatilla. Okay, so if you remember, these are the five remedies. I'd request you to note down these five remedies as being represented by Kent. So, Ignatia, Natrimure, Staphysagria, Lachesis, very surprising, and Pulsatilla. Okay, of course, Ignatia is the remedy that is covering four out of the five rubrics that we have taken. Alright, whereas weeping, tearful, mood telling of her sickness when are rubrics that are, you know, that, that veer our mind towards remedies like sepia and pulsatilla. But the initial rubrics that we took, disappointed love, point more towards Ignatia, Natrimure and Staph. Alright. So, these are the five remedies that are represented by Kent's representation. Now, let's look for another representation. Let's look for the representation of Boninghausen. Okay. Now, for this, we will have to clear this repertorization sheet give a blank sheet. So, you click on the last icon in the black taskbar where it will ask you, do you want to delete all the recorded symptoms which means clear the repertorization sheet. We click yes and it's blank. Okay. So, now we look in for Boninghausen's representation. Okay. Out of the totality that we had um, jotted down, 
we got these four rubrics okay the first is grief sorrow and care so general rubric nothing like an ailments from okay general the second is very interesting love unfortunate now we generally think of disappointed love but disappointed love is not represented in bbcr it is represented as unfortunate love so do you understand the you know finer differences in the verbiage that is used in different repertories the third is again a uh, it's not an ailments from but it is an aggravating rubric that we have taken emotions anger vexation silent grief suppressed etc with aggravation now all of this is represented together in one rubric in boninghausen whereas anger suppressed anger silent grief suppressed uh, grief is represented differently in kent it's represented differently in complete in boninghausen it is represented together and the last rubric is eyelids spasm cramp blepharospasm so boninghausen has directly written the word blepharospasm something that was not there in kent's repertory okay again this is how uh, different the verbiage is so now let us record these rubrics now these rubrics initially uh, in kent's repertorization i had shown you using the classic way for boninghausen we will use search repertory okay so for search repertory i just press command s from the keyboard and i start typing the keywords that i am looking for so let me just type grief simple one keyword when i click enter i see more than 800 references but i am only looking for the references from bbcr okay so for that i click on boning these are specific references from bbcr bbcr is represented as boning in our software okay so now in boning there are nine references for grief out of which i take the first one grief sorrow and care okay so i click on it and it is recorded now if you go down in the list and you see the third rubric emotions anger vexation silent grief suppressed with aggravates okay we will be considering this rubric as well since it is the third rubric on our list let us record this rubric also together here okay now interesting go a few rubrics down there is a rubric like grief sorrow and care but unable to weep now this is not there in our patient but it is an interesting rubric and boninghausen only mentions one remedy and that remedy is nakswamika did you even expect that a remedy like nakswamika would be there in grief and unable to weep okay so this is how this is why it is so important for us to know our repertories because it shatters our own prejudices against certain remedies we always thought that nakswamika is a go getter that nakswamika has a lot of anger but we did not know that he has unexpressed grief okay the next rubric that we will record is love unfortunate so again command s and we type love space unfortunate okay now in this very limited references because the word used is a word that is not used very often in the repertories which is unfortunate okay so 19 references out of which the first reference is what we will take from boninghausen or bbcr there are 15 remedies we click and it is done and now we go in for the final rubric 
which is blepharospasm. Okay, so a command S and we directly type blepharospasm. Okay, nine references. Now, if you see very interesting, the older apple trees have this word more. So, you will find it in BBCR, you will see it in Boric, Clark, Gentry. These are the old repertories that have this word that is used today in diagnosis. So, can you understand how they were so ahead of their time even in, uh, you know, the clinical aspects of homeopathy. So, we take the first rubric, we record that from BBCR, eyelids, spasm, cramp, blepharospasm. Okay, 25 remedies. We check the box and it is recorded. So, we had to record four rubrics that were represented out of the totality that we uh, jotted down in BBCR. And now, let's have a look at the remedies that come up. So, again, clicking on the repertorization sheet. Okay. The remedies that come up are Staphysagria first, followed by Hyosimus. Very interesting remedy that has come up. We could never think of hyosimus for this patient, could we? Ignatia, natremure and phosphoric acid. Okay. Now, another thing. Now, this is according to totality. So, gradation wise, staphysagria is first. But if I want to see those remedies that come first as far as rubrics covered. So, I want to see those remedies first that cover maximum number of rubrics. Then I click on symptoms covered and the list now gets rearranged. Although the first five remedies are the same, I now see that natrium mure has come ahead and Ignatia has stepped behind. Okay, so I have Staphysagria, Hyosimus, natrium mure, Ignatia and Phosphoric Acid. I hope that you have noted down these five remedies and this is why it is so important to know the evolution of the different remedies. Why has hyosimus come up in this list that we have taken is something very interesting that you can read from the different reference books and understand why Boninghausen has given this kind of a representation to hyosimus. All right. So, this was Boninghausen's representation. We go to the final representation, which is the representation of a modern repertory that is complete repertory. So, we will first clear this repertorization sheet by clicking on the icon for clear repertorization. All right. Now, we go in for the repertorization of a modern repertory. Now, here is complete repertory's representation. Now, complete repertory uh, has representation for all the symptoms that we considered in the totality. If you remember in BBCR as well as in Kent, we did not have any uh, satisfactory rubric to represent ailments from being cheated. But the same thing is there in, uh, but this rubric is there in complete. Okay. So, here is the representation from complete, mind, grief ailments from aggravates, disappointment, deception aggravates, ailments from. So, cheated is translated here as deception or being deceived. Love, disappointment, unhappy, ailments from aggravate, anger, ailments from aggravate, suppressed. Weeping tearful mood, telling about one's illness when. So, if you remember in Kent, it was telling about her sickness. In BBCR, there was no such representation. In complete, it is telling about one's illness. And the last is convulsions, spasms, lids. For academic curiosity, blepharospasm is there as a rubric in complete repertory. But it links back to this rubric here, which is why we have taken this rubric. Convulsions, spasms, lids. Okay. 
so now let us start recording these rubrics command s so we have grief ailments okay so i will directly type grief space ailments the first rubric is what i'm looking for mind grief ailments from aggravates so check the box the second is disappointment deception aggravates so command s and i put in deception all right see there are 14 rubrics for deception the first is what we are looking for disappointment deception aggravates ailments from okay so we record this the next rubric is disappointment in love if you remember in kent it was disappointed love in bbcr unfortunate love in complete it is disappointment in love so command s love disappointment all right the first rubric love disappointment unhappy ailments from aggravates 93 remedies recorded if i want to see which remedies are there in the rubric i just click on the rubric and now i can see the list of remedies that are there see very interesting is all five remedies that we remember came first in the list in bbcr are there as four mark remedies in complete hyoscyamus ignatia natremure acid fos and staphylococcus okay the next rubric is anger ailments from suppressed so command s anger suppressed okay so now see the first rubric that came is anger suppressed controlled so this uh, does match with our patient but the second one matches even more which is why we are taking the second one which is anger ailments from aggravates suppressed okay so we will be considering this rubric the next is weeping telling of her illness when so command s weeping illness okay first one weeping tearful mood telling about one's illness when 36 remedies we record this rubric and now the last rubric that we will be recording is convulsions spasms lids in kent it was twitching lids in bbcr it was blepharospasms and spasms whereas in complete it is convulsions so command s convulsions lids okay the first is what we look for convulsions spasms lids from the i chapter okay recorded and now we have recorded six rubrics from the complete repertory each uh, symptom of our totality is represented as a rubric let's have a look at this repertorization sheet okay this is very interesting staphysagria comes first followed by natremure ignatia pulsatilla and grade wise aurum metallicum grade wise because if we see symptom wise if i click on symptom wise i see that sepia comes first and aurum metallicum is pushed far behind so here we have staphysagria natremure ignatia sepia and pulsatilla these are the five remedies that are represented in complete now we come to how do we differentiate okay now when we are talking about differentiation we have to look at different aspects we don't just look at the rubrics that are represented we also have to look at 
the specific sphere of action we also have to consider the sensitivity of the patient when we are talking about finally arriving at the remedy now in all three repertorization uh, sheets or representations that we saw we know three remedies that are common among all three which are staphysagria natrum mure and ignatia now how do you differentiate between the three if you remember what he said if we go back in the presentation look at the first he requested meeting urgently though he said but doctor as per your convenience i don't want to trouble you this is somebody who is concerned about whether it is convenient for another person so he is concerned about the convenience of the opposite person plus if you look ahead he says he felt cheated sad and angry and that she had used him but he could not say anything to her because he did not want her to feel bad so again an abnormal concern for the opposite person okay now this level of concern is there only in two remedies one is staphysagria and the second is ignatia natrum mure is so much in her self pity mode that she will not or he will not rather be bothered about whether it is convenient for somebody but a staphysagria or an ignatia both plant remedies both highly sensitive will be very sensitive to what the others feel or what others say or what others want to do okay they'll be more they are more of selfless remedies which does not mean that natrum mure is selfish but i am just trying to you know uh, convey to you how we can differentiate between uh, remedies so here now we are confused between staphysagria and ignatia so how do we understand which is the final remedy for the patient so let us compare both these remedies and see which remedy comes up all right so we do a right click on staphysagria and select add to compare then we do a right click on ignatia and select add to compare and then we do a right click and select compare so now we can compare the two remedies ignatia and staphysagria side by side all right now let's compare them with relation to the keynotes okay so if you see ignatia and staphysagria ignatia has an underlying of hysteria not necessarily always but when there is such a level of grief or such a level of shock that has happened the immediate reaction is a hysterical reaction whereas staph is more of a suppressed personality they will not show their feelings that easily and especially to a person who they feel will get hurt read the first line sweet and gentle suppression of emotions and anger so this is there in staphysagria whereas in ignatia there is more of a hysterical tendency now if we directly want to jump to the section of the mind i click on section and go to mind and now i can see the two remedies compared mentally side by side okay now even after reading this in ignatia we see hysterical remedy alert over sensitive and nervous individuals in ignatia it is more of grief so the concentration in ignatia is only grief grief and pride whereas the concentration in staphysagria is suppression and anger along with grief and that is where we find 
that staphysagria is the remedy for the patient and not ignatia. So, the final prescription for this patient, the remedy chosen was staphysagria 1M potency because of the sensitivity of the patient. The state of fragile sensitivity which was simmering with emotions of anger, grief, indignation and helplessness. This combination is seen only in staphysagria and the contradicting considerate behavior towards the girl which is why staphysagria was chosen as the final remedy. Now before we go to the learning from the case, I want to show you something really interesting. In the repertory, like I said, blepharospasm is represented in Kent as twitching of eyelids. In uh, Boninghausen, it is blepharospasm. In complete, it is convulsions of eyelids. Let us see how blepharospasm is represented in different Materia Medica books. Because the repertory gives us just an indexing. But the Materia Medica will actually give you the symptom behind the blepharospasm. So if you want to see the references of blepharospasm in the Materia Medica, we do a search in all the reference books that we have in Zomio and see where we find references for blepharospasm. To do this, we go to books. So in the books, we go to search book and in search book, we type blepharospasm. Enter. And now you see that there are 53 references of blepharospasm in all the books that we have. So starting with chamomilla. So if you see, if we read what is there in chamomilla, there is blepharospasm with photophobia and yellow discoloration of the whites of the eyes. So you see this is the differentiation in the blepharospasm of one remedy from the other. On the other hand, if you go to agaricus, so twitchings are especially marked in the eyes, eyelids and facial muscles and agaricus has cured many cases of blepharospasm and tick convulsive. So in this manner, we can view all the remedies that represent blepharospasm in different reference books that we have. This is really interesting and this will help to enhance our knowledge of therapeutics of different clinical conditions. So, what we take from the learning? Now, what is the learning we take from this case? Many times, we need to reflect and recollect the different unspoken cues that the patient subconsciously expresses or delivers like a considerate behavior towards someone that we saw in this case. These cues play a very important role in the final decision of the remedy. It is very important to know how a remedy evolves rather than just the symptoms, which is why it was so easy for us to differentiate staphysagria from natremure and from ignatia. So thank you very much everyone. I hope you have taken away a lot of learning from this case and I will see you next week with yet another session of Zomio Classroom. Thank you and take care.